DeFi is definitely a buzzword these days, but what is it and what does it actually mean? If it's decentralized, where is your money stored? Who's making sure the system is functioning correctly and how is it safe if not a single authority is guarding it? Well, in this explainer video, we'll answer all your questions about DeFi. For more information on decentralized finance, please check out everbethelps.co.uk. DeFi is short for decentralized finance. Now, we're all familiar with centralized finance or CFI without actually realizing that that's what we're using. And this is where a central authority, such as a government or a bank, controls the flow of money and makes decisions about it. These authorities can do whatever they want with your money. They can print more money, which will consequently bring the value down, or they can stop you from borrowing at all. These authorities can even restrict access to your funds at any time by freezing your bank account, which happens to millions of people every year. The traditional centralized finance system is also expensive to use, especially if you consider credit card rates or personal or payday loans, where rates can be as high as 500%. These rates are high for two reasons. Firstly, the bank employs workers, and their salaries come from the interest that you pay on your loans. And secondly, you don't really have any other financing options. If you want a loan for your house or for a new car, for example, you're bound to go to a bank in your country for financing. Now, what if I told you there was a cheaper, more accessible option where no banks or governments are involved? An option where you could borrow money for lower interest rates, regardless of whether or not you're 18 or 65 years old. And this option is called Decentralized Finance or DeFi. Decentralized finance is an emerging finance ecosystem that does not require any supervision to function. With decentralized finance, there is just a piece of open source code that runs and acts as a bank, accessible by anyone. Plus, since these DeFi institutions hire zero employees, they're automatically a far cheaper alternative to centralized finance. Just think of it as a bank on autopilot. The DeFi ecosystem has three foundational aspects, cryptography, blockchain technology, and smart contracts, which we'll cover in other explainer videos. Now, we're going to go through the main foundations of DeFi. Let's start with stablecoins. Stablecoins, such as the likes of USDC, DAI or USDT, act as a bridge between the world of centralized and decentralized finance. They're pegged one-to-one -to, -one to the US dollar and are used to convert your fiat currency to cryptocurrency or vice versa. When you buy one unit of a stablecoin for a dollar, a new USD coin is minted. Similarly, when you withdraw your crypto gains to a fiat currency, the equivalent USD coins are burned, maintaining the demand and supply balance so that one stablecoin is always worth one US dollar. Now, say you bought the likes of a crypto like Solana when it was $10, but now it's worth $200. And you want to sell and withdraw your profits to your bank account. Well, you'd be required to use a centralized exchange like Coinbase, KuCoin or Gemini, and no stablecoins would be involved in the transaction. However, because they're centralized, they're going to be charging you a fee to do so because they hire people who need to be paid and essentially they need to run a business. Also, since you're withdrawing the money to your bank, depending on your location, you may be liable to pay taxes on your profits too. Another issue with centralized exchanges is that they can take a few days to transfer the money to your bank account. And if you're in a rush to buy or collect your gains, this isn't ideal. Now, suppose you decide to hold your profits in a stablecoin like USDT or DAI. In that case, you'll be able to purchase crypto later without incurring deposit fees every single time. You'll only be charged a small transaction fee too when you convert your stablecoins to the crypto that you want to buy. Another advantage of using decentralized exchange is that your account can never be hacked, nor the money can be taken from the government, which has happened in the past with some centralized crypto exchanges. With a DEX, your money will only move from wallet to wallet. There's no central reserve of funds and hence no chance for hackers to hack those reserves. And if you are planning on hodling crypto tokens, I'd recommend checking out deals for hardware wallets, which you can find over on our deals and promotions page at everybithelps.co.uk. Another advantage of decentralized exchanges is speed. When moving big chunks of money, a bank representative will call you to verify if you're making the transaction. Or if you're performing an online transaction instead, you'll have to add a beneficiary first to your account. Your bank will then send you an OTP, which you can enter on your screen. 
and once a beneficiary is successfully added, you can perform the transaction and get another OTP to complete the transaction. Instead, by using stablecoins, you can simply move millions of dollars from one location address to another in a matter of minutes, and it's extremely simple and fast. The next fundamental of the decentralized finance ecosystem is lending and borrowing. When borrowing from your local bank, you can get into trouble if you don't pay the money back on time. They could come to your house or charge you extra interest, or possibly even jail you if you fail to pay your specified repayment on time. When borrowing with crypto lending sites like Aave, your identity remains anonymous, and the only consequences you might face are getting your assets liquidated. Smartphones have allowed us to stay connected with our friends and family on social platforms without the need to meet them, and smart contracts have allowed us to lend our funds to borrowers on interest while keeping full custody of it. Now suppose someone wants to earn interest on their crypto. In that case, they can deposit it into the smart contract of a crypto lending platform, like I said, like Aave or Compound. Once deposited, the smart contract will give you an A or a C token, which you can use at any time to get the money back that you've deposited into the contract, plus the interest that you've earned on your deposit. Once deposited, the smart contract goes out and finds people that want to borrow money and release your money to them with an interest rate. When you want to withdraw, you'll just exchange your A or C tokens for your deposit in the smart contract. Like codes on a website that run automatically, smart contracts are pieces of code that run without any human interaction or supervision. If a specified condition is met, smart contracts will carry out all the necessary functions that your local loan officer does. To ensure that you never lose your money, these crypto banks also over collateralize your loans. This means that the borrowers need to deposit a higher amount of collateral than the loan that they're going to be applying for. This is done to ensure that lenders keep their investments safe and earn interest on them. But you might ask, Louise, what is the point of a loan if you have to deposit collateral at a higher amount than you actually want to borrow? Well, with over collateralized crypto loans, you don't need to sell your crypto, which you think might go big one day. You can take a loan, use that money where you want to, and give it back when your financial situation is better. So crypto loans allow you to keep your crypto investments safe in the long run. An extremely unique concept in the crypto lending circle is flash loans. These loans last for a flash second and give you the chance to make a quick buck. For example, if you could buy Ethereum for $10 on Coinbase and then sell it for $11 on Gemini, you can literally make an extra dollar by buying from one marketplace and selling it onto another. You can potentially make millions of dollars with flash loans by buying from one exchange and selling it across to another. The best part of a flash loan is that you're not required to put any money down as collateral. If you're unable to complete all the transactions in under 10 seconds, the money will never leave the bank. However, if you make the trades on both exchanges and return the funds to the smart contract in under 10 seconds, you have made around a million dollars. And all that's required is to pay a small fee to the bank for borrowing and you can keep the rest. Now we understand that this is an advanced method of borrowing in the world of DeFi, Still, you couldn't have imagined earning money like this in a centralized finance ecosystem. The next part is decentralized exchanges or DEXs, which we have already discussed. But this is where you can exchange from one cryptocurrency for another. In the world of traditional finance, when you want to send your US dollars to India, for example, you must pay hefty foreign exchange fees, which can go as high as 20%. Fees are incredibly low when trading from one cryptocurrency to another using a decentralized exchange. DEXs work in a way that investors pull their money together and then traders can trade that money. The fee of every trade goes back to those investors and it's all written in code so nothing changes. Decentralized exchanges also give exposure to far more tokens and coins. With centralized exchanges, tokens are added to a list once they reach specific regulations. However, decentralized exchanges can hold hundreds or even thousands because a single body doesn't regulate them. The next fundamental is insurance. With something like home insurance, you pay an amount every month or year to protect your home. And the insurance company runs some numbers and determines a premium for you based on their data. With decentralized finance, smart contracts becomes the insurance company. For example, if a farmer buys insurance through a mark contract for his crop and his crop dies due to high temperatures, the smart contract will repay him. 
And the smart code knows the temperature by connecting the real world to the blockchain using something called oracles, which are a topic for another video. The smart contract knows the temperature limit, and once that limit is reached, the contract will automatically release insurance money to the farmer. In this example, an oracle is created to read temperatures of the real world and is verified by humans that are an expert in this. The smart contract then uses this as the data for monitoring the insurance policy for the farmer. And the money paid to the farmer in this example will come from other people who are also buying insurance, or perhaps from investors who want to earn money by lending their money to the insurance company. Then we have margin trading, which is a great way for traders to maximize their gains. When trading with margin within centralized finance, you first must prove who you are and complete KYC, which is also known as know your customer. Then you borrow funds from an exchange or a lending platform to invest more than you currently hold. This is so that you can open larger positions and maximize your profits. And usually this means depositing funds onto an exchange that is then used as collateral by the exchange. As part of your margin trade, you'll be charged interest fees and transaction fees, which can really cut into your profits. In the world of decentralized finance, margin trading will differ between platforms. But the platforms that you can perform margin trading on include the likes of DYDX, where users can trade up to 5x leverage using their own funds as collateral. And margin trading is anonymous, accessible to anyone with money, and although it's likely that users will need to pay interest and transaction costs, these will be a lot lower than centralized exchanges. Finally, we have governance. And there's been a huge increase in the number of decentralized autonomous organizations, which are also known as DAOs. This is where smart contracts will manage the governance of a company. So instead of having the likes of board members or executives, instead decisions are made by the community who vote. A few companies, including Shapeshift and OneInch, are or are becoming entirely run by the community. So as you can see, there's a lot of value to DeFi, which is why so many investors are taking out their billions from traditional finance and putting it into this new technology. 2022 will see a lot of investment into DeFi, and if you're looking to make some money, DeFi offers a lot of potential. To find out more about the world of crypto, Please check out our new series of explainer videos and subscribe to our channel by clicking on the button at the bottom of this video. And I hope that you enjoyed this video today. And if you did, then please give me a like, hit the subscribe button, and please do head over to our website at everybithelps.co.uk for more tips, reviews, and step-by-step -step guides. Thanks, and I'll see you soon.